Hey YouTube, Jedi here. We got another Dragonair video. In this video, I want to go over my Grave of Rot team and give you guys some tips for how to push this. Um, as we get into this, I've said it before, I did all these in Season 0 with Epic Rare Champions only. Never pulled any gold dice, so I do have previous videos that are still relevant to these teams. However, there are better champions now for this, um, which I want to showcase two in particular. Um, and let's get into it. So... The main one, which everyone already knows about by now, is Sigrid here. You see all the content creators talking about her. She's really good for this. Um, she's good in a lot of areas, but this, I would say, is probably her star dungeon with this healing prohibition and the attack penalty down, as you're going to see when we get into it. She's the main person for that. Another champion I want to show off here is Epic um, Vika here. Uh, his thing is is he has this dispel two debuffs which is the boss lays out two debuffs and his heal is actually increased by getting those debuffs so last season my strategy for this dungeon so you guys know is that i would actually put resistance chest on everyone i would use resistance food pump up my resistance so i didn't get debuffs landed on me and then i would handle the boss that way this season since i have a cook here instead of doing resistance i am actually wanting the boss to land his debuffs so i get the extra heal off of him so these two for my team setup are pretty important if you're not using someone like the cook here who's going to be dispelling debuffs then i would recommend building resistance on your champions in order to survive this fight now for your other champions you of course need a dps dealer I'm using um, my boy Ripicus here is kind of a multi DPS slash utility champion. So he's going to, or sorry, tank slash utility. So he's going to tank, but he also helps me control the turn meter of the boss. Um, you could use any tank for this role. Just know if you don't have someone like Ripicus on the team who's controlling some turn meter, then you're going to need to speed up your champions using some of this gear right here with the skill haste on it. And that way they can lend their stuff on time. <laughs> And then my healer is going to be Furbath. You can replace him with any other healer. Of course, he's being healed and combined with the cook here. So even someone like Hexandra or something. And we're going to get this going, and I'm going to show you how my team operates. So for starters, I don't want Sigurd to use her special at all. So I'm going to turn it off until we're ready for it. You'll see the cook here comes in with the cleanse. We got that turn meter control, and this is why I have to do more manual link is because Ripicus doing that actually makes it so that my stuff doesn't land on time if I go full auto. So we use her right before the boss goes, get that health prohibition um, off, and now we're going to turn these two off. Actually, he's good to go. We want to make sure the debuffs are out before he does his heals, and we want to make sure that she attacks towards the end so the healing prohibition is up while he's chewing our tank. Now you guys are going to see at any given moment that he's going to have tons of debuffs on him. Um, the reason why is my Ripicus is laying out a lot of debuffs. If you have Ripicus, I highly recommend leveling him up. He is great for bosses. As we'll show here in a second when he goes. Boom, just watch that turn meter. So sometimes he lands it, sometimes he doesn't. But you'll see there he dropped the turn meter. And sometimes he'll drop it on every single hit because each hit has a chance to do it. And that just makes it so that our team in general can get their moves off where they need to do. Um, without Ripicus, this team would probably barely be pushing stage 7 if I was lucky. Um, I'm thinking it could do stage 7 without him. Maybe not, maybe stage 6. But Ripicus is helping push us up with that turn meter control. If you don't have something like that, like I said before, you just got to work on your skill haste so that your healing prohibition is going off on time and your heals are going off on time as you need to keep everyone healed up um, one other mechanic that you guys need to keep in mind is when the boss is chewing the your tank right there if you heal during that time your tank will not receive the heals so save your healer for when the boss spits them out and then for me i wait for the debuff so i can cleanse them at the same time but we don't want to heal while the boss is chewing a champion because if we do then we're going to end up just uh wasting those heals <laughs> 
sorry guys if you hear my kiddo in the background i'm uh watching the kids while i make this video today she's curious to see what is going on but as you guys see this is the basis of the team basically all we're doing is we have our tank our heal and our dps taking care of that side which we do in every dungeon and then we get our healing prohibition and our cleanse um, and then like i just said guys if you don't have that cleanse get yourself some high resistance and you'll be good to go for this dungeon and don't forget you have this little hand to help you knock off some extra damage anytime you need it All right, so that's the run. Um, I'm, as you see, farming stage eight, not quite ready for stage nine. I take too much damage. I either need to get some better gear, which we're working on getting Lego gear or leveling up my champions a little bit more to give you guys an idea on stats. This is kind of what we're looking at with Furbath, our healer. Ripicus, our utility. And remember, we're getting an accuracy bonus from our rare champion. Um, our damage dealer is our most stout champion. We're pushing tons of damage with this guy right now. This is what helps me the most. My healer setup. And then our debuffer here. Um, we have more accuracy than we need because of her bonus, but I have her set up like this um, just because I was trying to also push stage 9, which we just weren't successful on the survivability front for that. But we're getting there. So guys, when you go to do this dungeon, I do recommend building up Sigrid for this. She works really well with that um, healing prohibition. Um, I like her in this dungeon. The reason why I don't like her as much in the others is because this being a single target, sometimes you have to manual her or she targets the wrong champion, and I don't like that. But overall, for being a rare, she's really good. This helps a lot. Make sure you scroll her out if you're using her. And if you guys have a cook, I highly recommend using him for Grave of Rot. Um, I would say he's definitely S tier for this uh, one. As you see here, we dispelled two debuffs. And for each one dispelled, he gets extra 25% healing. So that's 50% healing, plus his base 15, plus if you book him, another 15. So tons of healing if he's dispelling debuffs. That makes him, when he's dispelling debuffs, he's probably the best epic healer in the game if he's not dispelling debuffs he's just a very average healer but that's all i have in the video if you guys check out the description click on those links for me i really appreciate it y'all have a good one